Hello, hello. Welcome to Heart of the Tribe. My name is Shell Wagner. I'm so glad that you came to join us today. Whether you're able to join us for this live presentation or whether you are able to view it later, we are just so glad that you came to fellowship with us today. I am so excited to be back today, um, of course, and to bring on Tammy Sorensen, my friend. We've both had uh, several weeks of adventures and new experiences with Yah, and we both are just praying that this presentation is a blessing for you. And with that, let me welcome my guest, Tammy Sorensen. Hi, hey. Tammy. Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you. Welcome. I'm so glad we're back together again. Me too. I miss this. I did too. This is, I love our Monday presentations. I love our time together, um, both on air and off. Yes. <laughs> <It's> wonderful. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I has done a wonderful thing in connecting us. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm just blessed and honored that he has. And I know our audiences too. We get, you know, so many great compliments from those that are in our audience that are just seeking to come up higher in their frequency yes. and, and be able to operate in Yah's kingdom and learn new things, you know, so that they can, you know, overcome what the enemy sends our way mm -hmm. through operating in that higher frequency that Yah is calling us to. Amen. And it's an infinite, eternal journey of going higher and higher. It is. It is. It's, it's really, it's, um, I, I, the, the thing from the tale of two cities runs through my mind a lot ever since 2020, it was the worst of times. It was the best of times yes. <laughs> because that is exactly what living through this time period on the earth is like. Yes. While the earth is groaning, we're feeling the groans and we're needing to step into what it means to be the sons of the most high that the earth is groaning for the manifestation of. So that transition, we've never been there before. Right. So we're navigating new waters, make the shift, yes. make the and switch. I, I do. I love that verse that says that the entire earth groans for the revealing of the sons of God. Yes. You know what? How exciting that Yah decided for such a time as this we and everyone who can hear my voice, we're living in this time. He picked, he could have had us born at any time. We could have been, we could have been traveling in a buggy across the prairie. <laughs> yes. I don't know how good I would have been at that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have done very well because there was no plugins. <laughs> But he picked now for us, right now. Amen. And the cloud of witnesses, you can almost feel them cheering us on. Yeah. This time because they didn't get to see it, but yet them cheering us on is very relevant to us it's, getting where we're going. It is. And 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 like you, I can I can sense that at certain times. You know, I become very aware of that, that we are really surrounded by that cloud of witnesses that, yes. that heaven is cheering for us. Amen. Yeah. And you can definitely sense the need for angelic intervention yes. in a number of ways because he set it up that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, what was it? I was a story I was reading not long ago. Uh, I guess it was it was the defeating of one of the of the enemies. I don't know whether it was the Amalekites or the Philistines. I, I just can't remember quite the story, but I know I was impressed because it was like it just took one angel to to deal with a, a hundred over a hundred thousand of the enemy. One angel was yeah. able to to take care of it. So we definitely <laughs> need to tap into there are more for us. Yes. than against us. And we also need to tap into how he used sound in scripture so many times to manifest a victory that was beyond human understanding. Yeah. 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 It, it really is amazing. You know, I've been, um, 
I've been trying to do a little bit of study because I, I love what I'm learning from you. And I keep, sometimes you'll mention things that I'm like, oh, I got to keep studying, you know, so I can kind of keep up there. But, but I was looking, I was looking at a book and it was, it was dealing with frequency and talking about the effect on the human body with, with the tuning forks on, on our bones, mm -hmm. you know, even. And, and I was like, this is just incredible. And I, I was privileged on in my time away to I have a friend who who has um an illness and so I was privileged to go up to Dr. Monzo's clinic and spend two weeks and they invited me to be part of her care team and to witness the power of the tuning forks and the different modalities of healing that's used in in ATB, especially in a very intensive type session, because we did uh sessions every day for two weeks straight, you know, we took off the weekends, but during the weekdays and, and we did uh, sessions that lasted from an hour to two hours every day. And, and the tuning forks were a very integral part of that. Yes. You know? Yes. It's amazing. It is amazing. And your music was playing during the, the whole time, you know, because that is also a very integral part, you know, of what's happening in those, in those ATB sessions like that. Amen. Amazing. So I felt like you were in the room with us. <laughs> That's awesome. I get humbled beyond humbled at the way Holy Spirit uses, uh, invites me into different people's journeys with that. And I, I have been invited to create a piece that ushered a baby who was being called home wow. into the presence of the Lord. I've been called to um, create pieces for a child who at age two had a cardiac arrest wow. and is needing major life um, building, life-threatening rescue kinds wow. of things. And as well as there's so many brokenness, so many people dealing with um, very difficult, need a miracle kinds of circumstances. And he is the only one that can give a miracle, but to be invited to come into that journey with them and partner with them and be a peace. It's very humbling. Yes. Yes. That's, that's how it felt for me as well to be invited into my friend's journey, yep. to be a part of that. And, and, you know, to be, to to have the 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 team at the clinic ask me to participate with them since I had been to school and and knew how to to administer ATB applications. So mm -hmm. I really I I my training got level got way pushed up, <laughs> and I'm really grateful for that. The best teacher, hands on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well. Do you want to, uh, I have a few things I want to address before we pick up where we left off last time. Some of them are answering some questions from an email I got. Some of them are just clarifying some things that we've already covered and then picking up where we left off when we get to the other side of all that. That sounds great. Let's go ahead and do that. All righty. So I'm going to start with this. And I'm going to push play here. I want to first um, bring up your amazing teaching and recommend if you, if you have not listened to what Holy Spirit put together through Shell's study and teaching on this, I exhort you to do it because it is spot on. We are in a tumultuous time right now where we're seeing leaders that have led a lot of people in ministry being shaken and not only they are they being impacted by what's being exposed but all the people that were part of their ministries and i've seen so much um not great things being posted or said and almost uh an exuberant excitement that these things are being exposed and the highlight of your teaching is I think it is so so important that we see each individual who is in Christ in Yeshua 
as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we are not speaking edifying, encouraging, comforting, building up higher resonating frequencies over whoever on whatever end of the spectrum, we're missing the mark. And I think that's a huge piece of what the whole body has been in training in. And I think we've missed it for too long. And to be the first Corinthians love that Paul wrote about, to be the love that Yeshua demonstrated of Yah, the Father. And everywhere he went, he demonstrated compassion and he healed, he built people up, he encouraged. And we, if we're going to call ourselves the ecclesia, the body, and he is the head, we need to understand when he said we're going to give an account for every idle word and that the tongue is like a rudder and we need to be using our tongue in this hour to build up, to encourage, to edify, or to comfort or be silent. Mm -hmm. And you nailed it when you said when we're talking about other people that are a temple of the Holy Spirit, we're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. We're grieving the Holy Spirit. And I'll stop there. Well, thank you, Timmy. That was um, that was a, a real labor in myself. And and one of the things that Yah is speaking to me about now, and I'm going, I'm preparing a show on it now, is there is an aspect of His love that covers. You know that it 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 says it it covers and it'll cover a multitude of sins mm -hmm. when we're operating in the frequency of His love. Right. That there is that there's a covering aspect, and that is one of the things I'm I'm working on for a future presentation. So thank you for recommending that. Can't wait to study up with you on that one. <laughs> All right. So that was the first point I wanted to bring up, and it's so critical. When you hear of someone's uh, missing the mark, you be the intercessor behind that. You be, I, I really believe the Father is enlisting intercessors and prayers for the purpose of praying his atmosphere, his heart, his will into all these shakings. And it will always be a higher resonating frequency. Absolutely. Veronica West had a profound prophetic word out on the 7th that if you didn't look it up, I don't always follow people, but Holy Spirit will highlight some of the things that he releases because we are part of a body, so none of us get all the pieces. And we need to pay attention when he gives someone a piece that pertains to our piece. Right. And this is all about the new sounds of glory rising, the mantles, the new kingdom movement. And there was a line that really popped out. I've highlighted the, the darker parts that are all about his glory, the new sounds and the new mantles. But I highlighted for the tuning fork of heaven wow. is descending into the midst of the chaos and confusion that has tried to oppress my people. I love that. That totally jumped out, resonates, it's spot on. And she goes on and lists things about new songs and new sounds, new rhythms, new frequencies. And it all happens with deeper encounters of his presence. None of this happens apart from his presence. So we have to be people, a body of his presence, making the time to spend in his rest. One of the tuning fork sessions I do is a Fibonacci uh, series of tuning forks. And we have a pineal gland. I'm gonna just leave it on this slide for a minute. We have a pineal uh, gland up in here that the bone is actually shaped like a butterfly. Isn't that interesting? Yes. And I love the whole story of the butterfly effect and all that, but the whole Fibonacci series, we see Fibonacci series in nature over and over again and in design over and over again. And this Tuning Fork series is specific to the scripture, be still and know that I am God, that I am Yah. Yes. And we have to learn how to be still with him and become better listeners because that's how we hear the Tuning Fork. That's so funny. When early in my walk, I used to say, 
you know, the hardest line in the Bible is be still and know that I'm <laughs> because I just had no earthly idea how to do it. And now it's one of my favorite things to do, you know, yeah. is to be still. But but it's a it's part of the growth process, I think. It is. You know? Yeah. We have to be presence seekers and people of his presence. And I love the visual because yeah. that's what it looks like in the quantum realm when we're being still. <laughs> and being tuned with heaven's tuning fork. Wow. Beautiful. It reminds me of that 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 spark of life as soon as you know the the egg and yes. the spark meet and new life begins. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So awesome. So check that one out. That was profound. Um, I also wanted to say that everything we've covered thus far, for the most part, I created I Felt, got a download in 2021 on a curriculum called I Am Sound, Sound Therapy for Children and Youth. I created a sound therapy instrumental only album. And then I created a sound therapy with, it's the first time ever he's asked me to put my prayers, my decrees over the frequencies in the right. tracks. So I have two different albums the sound therapy has the vocal decrees the scriptural decrees over each um, frequency and then the instrumental one is not so that you can hear what he has to say so it's all been published and copyrighted in 2021 i've just kind of tweaked and enlarged the powerpoint but i wanted to say that everything we've covered i put in print in this i am sound curriculum and in audio track as well Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so uh, let me just put the banner up there so that everybody can see. I do have a um, a banner right here. This is where you want to go to to find that. There's Tammy's website right there. Awesome. The other thing that um, I've done with the higher resonating frequencies and the words thing, this all ties into your your teaching that I brought up at the beginning. I had a major transition in 2017, and as I was trying to navigate it, I went and spent a few days with my son in Atlanta, which is not a very quiet place. <laughs> but he went into the post office, and I was sitting in the parking lot in Atlanta, and I'm asking, searching, and the Holy Spirit tells me to get out my phone and start typing. <laughs> and as fast as my thumbs could go, he gave me this whole list of higher resonating frequency words to teach the next generation. And so I ended up putting it in a curriculum called the children's heart cry, equipping the generations to be the kingdom of heaven on earth. And then I did a smaller version several years later called uh, the children's heart cry, the sound of a generation and it's more devotions for parents with children. And I did an album with those frequencies. And in the curriculum, I'm going to go on. I have this book, I Am a Good Idea. That's a whole identity book that Holy Spirit downloaded for children understanding their identity in Christ and their purpose in that identity. And it's written with graphics and for children and for teachers of children in any capacity or format. And then I also included Kingdom Tre Hidden Treasure, Kingdom Jewels and Me, which is all a journey of unpacking the sevenfold Holy Spirit and Jesus right. as the word, as prophet, priest and king for children. And they're all colored, illustrated books written in very simple sentences. So you can teach your kids very scriptural truths in a very colorful, illustrated book with simple to understand concepts. And I also put how did we get to here and how do we get to where we need to be? <laughs> That's a very interesting title. And it's filled with my own kids' artwork and original song that Holy Spirit gave me about all the children who've been abandoned, abused, fatherless, sick, all of those kinds of things, and even our culture. How did we arrive at where we are? And how right. do we get to where we need to be? Jesus is my name. 
And it's all illustrated with my own kids' art when they were teenagers. And so that one's a fun one. That's all included in there. Was I not listening or did someone not telling tell me is my own biography? Um, <laughs> I updated it in 2020 or 2021 to include a 30 day devotional at the end with that was downloaded as I walked the mountains of Pisgah forest. Right. And so that's there. And also in my curriculum is, um, Oh, I know why I need to go out of this. I've done a whole PowerPoint on my children's heart cry nice. where I list in the book, that whole um, piece that Holy Spirit downloaded in the parking lot. And I'm just going to show you. I, I illustrated it in a video, but I included this in my curriculum as well. And the children's heart cry is, teach me to intimately know the depths of my heavenly father's love wow. and to know my eternal value. And it's filled with children of every tongue, tribe, and nation with all these very Holy Spirit and fire um, inspired higher resonating frequency purposes of what we are to teach the children of this generation instead of where things are currently. So I will go out of that now, but this, so my curriculum has four children's books in it. And I just wanted to point that out because um, I, I think it's a valuable resource in a I, culture where, where it's hard to find that. It is, you know, I, um, not long ago, the father it, it told me to go to the library and he said, I just want you to go take a look through the children's section. And I'm telling you, it, it was, it grieved me to the core because it's full of witchcraft. Yes. And so I am so glad that the father put it on your heart to make good resources for our children because it is definitely needed in this generation and so thank you for sharing that with us today so that people understand that it's there because even though i had really looked at your website i didn't realize all that was there and and what what a wealth you know to to help in this generation sure, sure. i'm so glad you did well, this curriculum, I need to update a couple of things, but this is all available on Amazon. And I know this curriculum's good because I have a couple of book publishing companies that have called me nonstop trying to get me to jump on board with their tour with there's always expense involved. And I just haven't felt prompted. I feel it's for very specific people looking for that for their children or children they work with. Right. So now I want to move on to some questions that I got via email since our last time we met together. Um, this first one I didn't understand because I did look up in the Dr. Monzo's book and I did look up in the Healing Codes book and there was no 531 with these two frequencies about not using me and so together. Um, me and so as tuning forks, I understand why... I can answer the question from a musical standpoint. 528 is C major and 741 is F sharp major, which is a tritone. So they don't sound very good together. So that is the musical answer I can give for why not using the tuning forks, me and so together. Do you have anything to add to that from your ATB training? I do not. Okay, that was the only thing I could think because I did look up this to try to answer it the best I could, and that's why. Then it says, please share the frequencies of the body tuners you are using. So I will go out of this a minute. And um, you have my screen so they can see if I hold this up. Is that correct? Yes, let me, there, yes. This is an 852, just like the regular tuning forks, weighted tuning fork. This is the 741, the blue one, just like the regular tuning fork. This is the 639, the green one, just like a regular tuning fork. This is the 528, the yellow one, just like a regular tuning fork. Here's the 417, 
just like the regular tuning fork and we haven't gotten to the 396 but that one's red that's where we left off last time and that's just like the regular tuning fork as well i have not found a company yet that i trust or that's reputable that has the 963 the 285 and the 174 that's in a weighted I've seen them available in a weighted, but I need to do more research on the company in order before I would purchase it. I like to know where things come from. And yes, I can cleanse anything in the blood of Christ um, with the power of his resurrection and glory, but I still like to know where my resources are. So with that, I also have weighted ohm, mid ohm, and low ohm, but I don't call them that. I call them shalom forks, peace the peace, the prince of peace and the peace that surpasses all understanding. I have a mid and a low um, shalom fork and they're an octave apart. And I do use those because I like to open us up to what Holy Spirit wants to teach us throughout each session. So I use these at the beginning and I use them at the end to seal things. So what the, the work that the Holy Spirit has done. So hopefully that will answer that question. And now I'm going to come back into the play mode with this. Okay. Anything before I go on? No, that's great. Okay. Are there possible side effects one could experience as the body is being set back in order? I ask about the side effects because the second time I used them, I had a very brief dizziness. Well, you have to realize that tuning forks are kind of like detoxing. Wow. So whenever you detox, you need to drink lots of water. You need to be, same with a massage. You need to drink lots of water. You need to get up slowly. You need to take it easy. Watch what you eat your first day or whatever. Um, they're not necessarily side effects. They're just what happens when you detox. So do you have anything to add to that show? Well, wow, that, that makes a lot of sense. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that but you know i didn't realize that that the tuning forks would have that detox effect but yeah that makes a lot of it makes a lot of sense you're realigning things like when you get a chiropractic adjustment like when you do atb you're realigning things and when you realign things it affects the energy systems in your body and right. so you're of course going to feel a little different as those things try to get set back rightly aligned in the same way that right now the earth is groaning for a realignment and we're feeling things shaking but we know that the father is good and when we go through this shaking with him when things get realigned it's always better than it was before it got disaligned right then it says, can you use a tuning fork to alter water before you drink it? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that when I had seen that question. So I was very interested in this one, too. That, that's very interesting. Absolutely. The only thing is, is you would want to drink it right away because just like with chiropractic and wherever you, with tuning forks, you have to do that more regularly because where you go, there's frequencies everywhere and you just have to be conscious of making sure you hold the frequencies that YAH has made available. And so one of the resources I did look up on Dr. Monzo's site, Wellbeing by Design, I did notice that the halo link was broken. So I did a little research with the halo and the halo system is excellent, but it's really pricey and out of most people's price range. I'm not saying they're not working on that. I don't know much about that. Maybe you can speak to that or Dr. Monzo can speak much better to that. But right. I do know a company that I know intimately. They are Holy Spirit word filled people that have gotten a major download from Holy Spirit on how to research all of the frequencies for structuring water for affecting your higher resonating frequencies for blocking the EMFs for up to a long distance and their water structure products are very affordable. And these are wonderful people. I encourage you to sew into them, to check out. They have everything from jewelry to uh, rings. You can set a small ring right on your Berkey. You can set a larger ring. You can set the structure anywhere in your house. 
Um, they're, they're made out of copper or sterling or antique. They have so many choices and you can read in depth about the higher conscious science behind everything Holy Spirit has led them to do. These are not people, these are people who um, have wholeheartedly yielded to Holy Spirit being their, them being a Holy Spirit vessel to give people the tools they need energetically with what we're dealing with in our atmospheres everywhere. Right. Right. For such a time as this. For such a time as this. So I highly encourage, I will share the same story I worked, I shared with Shell. I usually am a one and done person when I'm working on an album. Holy Spirit has given me a new album assignment. I'm finishing it up and I always get the aleph. I can usually get it in one take. It's done just like it needs to be, and we go on to the next step in the album. My husband is my litmus test. He also has a music major. He also is very intimate with Holy Spirit, knows the word. So when he tells me it's it's we that one that one's done, we're ready to move on. I know it's good, and he'll be very honest with me as that one's not quite right. You need to keep working on that one. And with this album, I had one track that I've given him four different versions and I have been frustrated with it. And I think it has something to do with um, some stuff going on in my personal life that has been trying to attack my higher resonating frequencies. I'll say it nicely, <laughs> but um, I wanted to do one more that he said wasn't close enough, but it was really good. I, I knew I needed that to complete the album. So today before meeting with Shell, I sat down and I've never gone before at the very most two or three takes. And like I said, it's usually an aleph, one and done. Well, this one got to 21 and I said, oh my gosh, am I just not supposed to do this? Is this not right? And I had this little prompting put up your um, serenity that I got from Theon Designs and watch what I'll do. So that was take 22, which is Alev Tov. Um, and it came just like that. <laughs> so I want to attest to how impacting they are, how wonderful they are, and the people behind them are wonderful. They're giving, they sow into kingdom ministries with what they do all the time. So, and I'm one of those. So I'm thankful, blessed beyond blessed. Yeah, that that's awesome. That's, um, we need every resource we can get. I know one other resource I use just to structure water is my laser kit from Dr. Yep. Monto. I'll yep. put in, um, they the home laser kit comes with what they call a mineral uh, vial. And so I will use that. And, and if you don't have a laser kit, I do have a link on the description where you can purchase a laser kit because yeah. they are really important to have right now. And yeah. if you don't mind, Timmy, before we go on, um, we do have a question here. Okay. This is from Janet. She says, um, are any of these Rife apps that are out, um, that are out there, are they le legit frequencies? I honestly am not the expert on Rife. I know what Rife is. I absolutely know it works. But I do know, according to a conversation I had with Dr. Monzo, that they all work differently. And so you have to know what you're doing. I do know someone who was really struggling. They bought a unit and trying to figure out how to apply it correctly to what they're dealing with. And I know they had to meet with Dr. Monzo. And I know that all of the, the Rife machines are different. So there's no one answer to all that. So you need to be spirit led on what you purchase and even on how to use it. I know there's a couple of experts. Lindy Strong is someone, she has a wellness hub in England uh, in the UK. Um, she would be one I would recommend. I would recommend Dr. Monzo because they use Rife at Wellbeing. I don't have a Rife machine myself, so I don't want to send anyone down rabbit holes. I do know that a lot of the apps, um, it depends on who the developer would be, I think, 
you know, just read the history of what happened to the developer of Rife, and you know that they are not wanting that to be readily available to people. So you have to watch who you trust and who you get things from. So be very Holy Spirit led, very Holy Spirit discerning in what you choose to purchase and from whom you choose to purchase it. Same with your tuning forks. You right. know, well-being by design is a excellent resource. And that's why um, we want to make as many of these available people that we know, ministries that we know that we can trust these links available to you to make the choices that your budget can afford, how Holy Spirit is leading you. Right. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. I don't know if I answered it, but I think I did. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. So, um, I wanted to pick a chart that would show where I'm putting these on the body remotely or in an in-person session. It's really hard to find a, sh a chart that's not full of new age stuff. Yeah, okay. I can imagine. And so the top one that probably technically is a right color, but I choose that top one above the crown to be the white, wow. the Holy Spirit. And um, the rest of them are accurately placed on the forehead for the purple or on the back of the head in that same spot for 852, the front of the throat or the back of the throat for the 741, for heart level at the breastbone in the front or in between the shoulder blades on the back, the yellow is about an inch or two above your belly button on the front or same spot on the back in your core. The orange is about two inches below your belly button or on the back below your core. And then the red is at the base of your spine on the front and the back. So I wanted to have a very clear picture of where the colors, where you place the tuning forks, whether you're using the regular ones where you're doing the energy feeling two, three inches above your body until it rests, or whether you're using the actual body tuners and placing them on the body with the gem, the rocks, the gems. Right. So any questions or comments with the chart? This no, was that's the one that I could find that was most neutral. So don't worry about reading all the stuff. It was more for the placement of the frequencies. Right. Yeah, it's really nice for us to have a, a visual of that because you've been explaining as you go through each one where to place it and it's nice right. to have the visual. And I know that, that that top color of white, that also follows what Dr. Monzo has in his book, Understanding the Seven Cycles of Life Manifestation. So. Correct. And that is the 963 hertz. I wish I had a weighted one for it, but I don't. But um, I, I've been looking. Um, if I find something, I'll be sure to let people know. Okay. All right. So there was another word that came out on the 20th of February, and I love this topic because it's right in what we're talking about. And I'm going to read this one because I think it's why we're doing what we're doing right now with this series, Shell. Okay. I heard the Lord say today, the discussion on the topic of frequencies is not going away. It's only going to increase. I'm sure what I heard today will apply to many things, much of which I don't even have an understanding of yet. I've had several dreams through the years regarding frequency, a topic I never knew anything about until I was shown in a dream. I'm sure God will unpack more in time. However, one thing I have felt for a long time is that there's going to be a whole movement of Christ-centered worship and worshipers that recover the sounds and frequencies of Yah's creation. Putting sound back under Yah's order, that alignment, that realignment, and breaking the detuned control mechanism that the occult has used in their manipulation of frequencies. And I don't care if it's in the water. I don't care if it's in the EMFs from the towers. I don't care if it's on the social media and our devices. I don't care if it's in the music, the art the relationships, the finances, all of it, there is a an occultic manipulation of frequencies inundating in this now time. And that's why we have to be so persistent in seeking him, his presence, and hearing and seeing and receiving the download on this topic. 
He says, let me also say having the right frequency without a right heart with Yah is still the wrong sound. Mm -hmm. I believe the greatest sound in the days ahead will be that which incorporates the life-giving frequencies Yah put in creation along with the spiritual light of Christ's purity in hearts. And that's why back to your teaching on the blasphemy, this all ties together so intricately. The roar of Judah is going to rise again. The singers and the musicians are going first into battle. The harps are going to break the spell. The key of David will open and shut gates. It's time to war over the frequency. It's time to let Yeshua's victory Resound. Wow. Yeah. I love that's that. Wonderful. I love it. And that's a phrase that I keep hearing over and over again. It's just like reverberating in my being is the roar of the lion of Judah. And it's going to roar in his people again. I, I can just feel it. Amen. Because we have had a time of knowing him as the lamb. Yes. As the cross, but he hasn't been on the cross since he resurrected. And it's time for a kingdom people to know him as the lion, as yes. the one who has resurrected in all of his glory and all of his victory and in all of his power. And it's a supernatural revelation, a supernatural existence. You know, when, when Leah had her son, Yehuda. She named him that because praise was coming up out of her being. They've yeah. always been the front part of the army that marched forth into battle yeah. with the praise. It, it, that is the roar of yeah. the Lion of Judah. It's, it is the worshipers going forth, glorifying the king. And it's it, their faith, their hope, their belief, their assurance, everything in who he is brings forth that victory in every battle. Amen. It's, it's why we lift up our heart. We lift up our eyes or lift up our hands, open the doors and let the king of glory come in. Yeah. And he enters our court. We enter his gates or his courts with gates and praise always. Yes. So we're all learning that to navigate that on a whole new level. Yeah. So this brings us back to the frequency that we um, left off with. I'm going to go back quite a bit. I'm actually going to escape because I can do it faster this way. If we go back into up here we have started with the 963 right and we traveled to the 852 then we and i and i did it from the top down partly because that is the atv cycles right. I, they're in a different order but also isn't that what we're wanting holy spirit to do bring his heaven's heart and will to where we are yes so that we can be his vessels of ruling and reigning. So that's why I did it in descending order. There's the 741. Then we went to the 639. Then we went to the 528. We did the 444, which is a huge spiritual connection to the physical part of the ATB cycle, right. part of a major tuning. Then we did 417. Then we came down and did everything we talked about today, and we're at 396. Wonderful. So now I will go back in here and move on. For 396, the sevenfold spirit is the spirit of the fear or the awe of the Lord. Why? Because that's the beginning of everything wisdom. That's the beginning of everything we enter into. And so us being seated in heavenly places... This is the root. Where are we rooted and grounded in the heavenly places because of the spirit of the Lord, which is the beginning of any wisdom we would receive from him. And the color is red because it represents his anointing, his power, his prayer, his healing blood, his atonement, his thanks, our thanksgiving, our passion. All of that's connected to the color red. 
The energy gateway is the root to the Cossix area. It's also indicative of on the seventh day, y'all rested. What's a position of rest seated in heavenly places? He sat beside the Father and then forever engages in intercession over us. So we're rooted and grounded in that place. And the intention is to set us free, to liberate us from everything the enemies tried to put on us, the guilt, the fear, even the shame and the condemnation. We don't get there without the blood of Yeshua. And he who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. So we need that freeing, that liberation that comes with this gateway. The name of Yah is Jehovah Shama. Yah is present. Um, we will read Ezekiel 48:35 on the next slide. The armor of Yah is the shoes or the good news. This is all good news for anyone wrestling with what's going on. That's why it's the best in the worst of times. If we want to focus on the worst of times, we're going to miss the good news of the best of times that he's making available to us because of the love of the Father for the Son, the Son for the Father, and that agape love for us, learning to love ourselves with that love so that we can love others with that love. We can't love others with that love if we don't comprehend it, embrace it, receive it as he intended to gift it. And then that same gift, loving ourselves and accepting us in that and then bestowing it to others. And then the redemptive gift, that all comes with mercy. How we respond is mercy. The world is looking for people who have that compassion of Christ that we were talking about earlier today, Shell, that everywhere Yeshua went, he was confronted with broken, hurting, desperate, needy people. And what was his response? Compassion. He gave them mercy and compassion. He was very pastoral in a lot of it. He demonstrated the apostolic. He demonstrated the pastoral. He demonstrated the prophetic the evangelistic and the teacher. But I do believe when he demonstrated healing, he was being very pastoral, caring mm -hmm. for each individual he encountered. And the gifts of the spirit is the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues. We don't, well, a lot of times with what we're confronting today, don't even know how to pray. Right. or what to pray for. We know his word will never return void, but we need to know Holy Spirit is saying, highlighting that word because even the enemy knows the word. So we need to know what is he highlighting? What's his now word? And when we don't have a handle on that, gift of speaking in tongues is so important just to pray how he's leading us because yeah. he knows and the enemy can't decipher that. Yeah. I, I've heard, I've heard, you know, times when I am in, in turmoil and facing things that I just don't know how to get to, I'll hear y'all say, don't speak in English right now. <laughs> like you're going to make a mistake if you're filtering everything that you're experiencing through what you know. You know, I think that that was probably one of the biggest lessons that I learned in my experience of going to the advanced ATB and, and, and working on that for two weeks is they were really working with me and showing me, demonstrating to me how important it is to step out of bias, you know, and, and to be very a vessel for the Ruach to flow through in purity, but yes. it, you really have to learn how to put your bias because our humanity comes in and we all kind of, even if we think that we're not being biased, we come to things with a bias. Yes. We think it's supposed to look this way. And mm -hmm. so we go into it with that mindset and it's a hindrance. It and is. So when we can get rid of that and put that aside and, and really be, a vessel for the Ruach to flow through the way that he wants to flow through mm -hmm. and, and put our, push that humanity aside. And I do think that that, that gift of tongues is certainly a, a tool for that. Yes. You know, to help us get beyond our own bias. 
Amen. Because if there's one thing I know that I know about this journey we're on, it never looks like how we think it was going to look. That's for sure. <laughs> and I know that this gift is very controversial in right. the body of Christ. And a lot of people are even uncertain or unsure of stepping into it. But that's where faith steps in because we don't have to understand it. It's right. part of that higher ways higher thoughts and we just trust him and he'll take over right. if we take that step. Yeah. And we I do think that it's, it's important, you know, when you're, we've got to be even in exercising of the gift and how we exercise that, especially in a public setting, we need to be very wise and discerning, you yes. know, on, on that because it can be a hindrance for others. So, yeah. you know, we, even in how we use his gifts, we must be discerning and led by him. Amen. That's an absolute yes. Well, the fruit of the spirit, not surprisingly, is love because the whole story we're involved in is centered on that. Right. And the love is represented through the blood that Jesus, Yeshua, gave on our behalf not to condemn, but to save all. Right. So going on, uh, let's take a look at Ezekiel 39, 6 and 7. Do you want to read that? Sure. And while you're looking that up, I'm going to go through the numbers passage that gives us the frequencies. We've done this with every one of the frequencies from the get-go. In Numbers chapter 7, starting in verse 12, this one plays out a little differently because it's walking through all of the tribes presenting wow. their gift, their offering. In verse 12, 1 and 2 makes 3. It says, Nashon, the son of Aminadav from the tribe of Yehuda, presented his offering on the first day. So then we go to verse 18. On the second day, Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, leader of Yish Yishikar, presented his offering. One and eight makes nine. So we're going first and second, and we're going to get a different tribe with each day doing the same thing, presenting their offering. Going to verse 24, two plus four is six. So we have our first set of three, nine, six. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helan, leader of Zebulun, presented his offering. Then we go to verse 30. On the fourth day was Elitzer, son of Shadur, leader of the descendants of Reuben. Sorry, that was 30. We want 30. Yeah, that was right. We want 30. So on the fourth day, that was the next tribe. So then we go to 36. On the fifth day, three and six makes nine, was Shimeel, the son of Zuri Shaddai, leader of the descendants of Shimeon. So then we go on to 42. Actually, that should be 43, shouldn't it? No, four and two is six. Why do I, do you see why I do these one at a time? Because if you're doing right. all of them, you can really lose everybody really fast. Right. <laughs> it's skipping all these lines and it all looks the same. So oh, wow. 42 makes six. On the sixth day was Eliasef, the son of Deuel, leader of the descendants of Gad. So we have our second group of 369. So then we go to 48, which is on the seventh day, was Elashima, the son of Amahud, leader of the descendants of Ephraim. Four and eight makes 12, which is reduced down to one plus two equals three. Then we go to 54, which is on the eighth day was Gam Gamliel, the son of, I can't even pronounce all of these, leaders of the descendants of Manasseh. Five and four is nine. And then we go to 60. On the ninth day was Avadan, the son of Gideon, Gidoni, the leader of the descendants of Binyamin, and that makes your six. So we have the next group, and we still have one more on 66. On the 10th day was Akazizer, the son of Aminshadai, leader of the descendants of Dan. Six and six makes 12. Reduce it down. One plus two makes three. Then we go on to 72. On the 11th day was Pagil, 
Pagiel, the son of Akram, the leader of the descendants of Asher. Seven and two is nine. And last but not least, we have 78, which is on the 12th day was Akira, the son of Enon, leader of the descendants of Naphtali. Seven and eight makes 15, reduce it down. One and five makes six. So all of these are just talking through all the tribes, giving their offering each on a different day, but they give us 396, all rooted and grounded in him. I love it. And, and, it, and it, it's the perfect, you know, temple configuration because Levi's not listed because right. they are surrounding, you know, all of they're they're like this buffer between the glory of Yah and all the people there's, mm -hmm. they're ministering to Yah and the people and their position. It's very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So do you want to read the Ezekiel passage? Yes. So we're in Ezekiel 39, 39, 6 and 7. Okay. Uh, and I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles and they shall know that I am Yahweh. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Yah people, Yasharel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One, in Yasharel. Amen. He says every tongue will confess, every yeah. knee will bow, and he's all about nations. Mm -hmm. And so, and the whole thing is wrapped up in his love. Yeah. And we get to choose. So back to the unpacking of 396, we already talked about it being the spear, the spirit of the fear, and I need to change that word as reverence with a V, not F, and awe of the Lord working in tandem with the spirit of knowledge in revealing the glorious substance of Yah, his majesty, his holiness, and it is the beginning of all wisdom, the thread that keeps all seven spirits in place. Mm. Then Ephesians 3, 16 through 21, where we are rooted and grounded and established in his love. And he tells us to go make disciples, the fivefold ministry gifts co-laboring in his love with mercy and compassion. Ephesians 2, 6, seating us with him in the heavenly places because we are in him. And Proverbs 9, 10 and Psalm 111.10 talk about the reverent fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. So you can't even get back to 852, the spirit of wisdom, without this spirit. And this spirit works in tandem with the spirit of knowledge because that spirit of knowledge is an intimate knowing of the Father. Mm -hmm. I think that is an area where we have in the past very much missed it and why God has so many different routes to him kind of thing and why we've we've changed this so profoundly that it doesn't even mean what it means anymore in the respect that the spirit of knowledge is knowing the father intimately. Right. He's not just Elohim. He's Elohim of Elohims, and he is the God of the Old Testament, the New Testament, the same yesterday and today and forever. But in order to really come into the, that he's inviting us into, it's an intimate knowing of the three parts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And each one plays such a strategic, personal role in our lives. And that works in tandem with the spirit of awe. And yeah can't even get to the spirit of wisdom without that. Yeah, that that's such a, a good word. It because it is, it's that intimacy that makes all the difference. You know, when I think about like the feast that he's given us, you know, to work through, to me, they're all like the wedding, you know, and and, and in that wedding process, there's the spring feast of the betrothal where we're in awe. And then there's, there's the Shavuot, you know, where the ketubah is signed. And then there's the, the fall feast to where there's the consummation of the wedding. Well, when you think about Yeshua, he, he had to suffer greatly to, mm -hmm. to bring us in to be his bride. And yeah. so there's a fellowship of suffering that, that we do go through 
suffering to become fit to be his bride, you mm -hmm. know, and it's that there's a fellowship of suffering one for another that, that brings us to that place of intimacy. Yes. The more we walk through that, the deeper, higher and wider we go in him. And yet at the same time, it's not a striving. It's nothing we can do. He has already done it all. But it's us up to us to be with him, to yeah. be the sons and learn what that looks like. Right. What that acts like, what that thinks like. And it's all about others. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's all these things that sound so complex and yet he did it. Yes. That's the wow. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can wrap your spit around that. <laughs> it's, it's a lot actually to wrap your it is. spirit around, your brain around. Yeah, it is. it is. But this is what brings us full circle in the Isaiah 11 verse 2, the sevenfold spirit. Yeah. The gifts of the spirits, the gift of speaking in tongues from 1 Corinthians 12, 10, flow from being rooted and grounded in his love. It's a, it's a um, sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Which is so crucial to our journey, so necessary in these times in which we live. Right. This referencing as liberating grief and fear. And I want to add shame and condemnation to that because I think they're all intricately connected into what um, the identity that the darkness, the enemy tries to put on all of us, mm -hmm. that he made a way for us to completely escape because it's all about the right fear, the spirit of the fear of the Lord that I know my intercessor friends and I every week ask him to blow it from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. We so immeasurably need the spirit of the fear of the Lord to dispel the counterfeit fear, the counterfeit fear that brings shame and condemnation and guilty guilt that is so flooding the earth and trying to bring the lower resonating frequencies that we as sons of the most high are called to be vessels of dispelling as well. You know, I have to sometimes like make myself little, little things of how I'm going to get something into my spirit. So I'd heard John Bevere um, preach about this, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that basically when you, that's what you're invested in is the fear of the Lord that it causes all other fear to fall away, mm -hmm. you know? And so I've put that kind of in myself when I am, when I'm, when I'm experiencing fear over something, I've learned to start asking myself, where are you lacking in the fear of the Lord? Right. Mm -hmm. Because obviously that's what's going on. And I have to get that straight within myself. If yeah. fear is affecting me somehow, I'm not putting my fear of the Lord in the number one spot where it needs to be and give myself that check and say, all right, let's get it back on track. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't go into what the world's trying to drag you into, but, but put y'all where he belongs. Yes. And, um, because when I fear him, I'm not going to be fearing anything else. Amen. Because he didn't give us a spirit of fear. He, he not. Spirit, the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind right. which transforms all of that into forgiveness grief guilt into forgiveness and grief into joy yeah well, it, does, it puts you in the power spot yes it, it really does it puts you in the in the place of overcoming yes amen yeah so the life languages or the redemptive gifts would call this the collie because it's the place of loyalty, affection, attentiveness, trainability of which I put teachable heart. Isn't that what we all need? Absolutely. <laughs> so that wraps up the 396. I guess I'm going to play it again. Um, I need to get my one that I have to strike. 
I, I forgot that I needed to play those, so I'm just going to let this one resonate. And again, this one goes on your base of your spine, your root, your caustic. Here's the body tuner. I call them body tuners, but they're actually even the more accurate name is weighted forks, W-E-I-G-H-T-E-D. And that coccyx where it, where it goes on the body point, that, that LFM point is the final zoddy, uh, you know, just so people know that's, that's where that is. I find that interesting too. It's all fascinating. It really is. <laughs> it's the zoddy is like that, that righteous man. You know, it's the, it's the, the letter, you know, for righteousness. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So my next frequency is not a tuning fork that I have, but it is a tuning I use on the keyboard and it's very intricately tied to some of my own prophetic words. It's tied to the number three in scripture, the Trinity, and it's tied to some very key scriptures that are part of my journey of being called into being a vessel of him creating through me and releasing um, heaven's higher resonating frequencies on behalf of others. And Psalm 33.3 is a life scripture for me. And that is sing to him a new song, play skillfully on the strings with a loud and joyful song. Piano is an instrument that is a stringed instrument. The hammers strike the strings, which nice. I find fascinating and interesting in and of itself. And I think I shared earlier in the series about a vision that came when a number of us were deep in the higher realms into his presence when someone had this amazing vision of the sky just being full of solid granite. It's kind of interesting because I live in a region that that's what's underneath all the dirt is granite. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the granite was as far as you could see, it was blocking the open heavens but then they saw me just take this tiny little hammer and give it a delicate little strike. And just like that, the whole thing burst into the most glorious colors and the sky opened up. And then someone said, isn't there scripture like that? And there is Jeremiah 23, 29 is not my word like fire that mm. consumes all mm. that cannot endure the test says the Lord. And like a hammer that breaks the most stubborn rock in pieces. Right. So that's how I see what I do, especially for when I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. one of the most important pieces I trust the Lord for is to give me a word for them, to give it in, to insert it into their piece, because there's so much about the Hebrew alphabet, the living letters, that spoken word that is his, his chosen people that we don't understand because they're living. They're uh, three dimensional word pictures that are beyond anything English words could do. So when I insert that into an, a frequency piece where I'm striking the hammer, where I'm striking the rock, I'm believing he's doing everything I can't. And I'm just saying here, Lord, I am, I'm a vessel, use me. Yeah. And, and I, I you know I've been I've been fortunate enough to be a recipient of that. The the prayer that you sent me, I was experiencing some anxiety about my my trip to Ohio. And and Tammy sent me a prayer that was a, a, a musical piece. And I'm telling you, I played that and it opened the floodgates for me to just kind of cry some and release what I was holding inside. Mm -hmm. And then that night. I was able when I listened to that, like before I went to bed and my sleep 
was so peaceful and mm-hmm. so sweet. And there was such, because it was, it, it, it did, it, it hit all the personal areas where I needed a touch from mm-hmm. Yah for it to ease my mind and, and allow me to just rest and in his presence. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. That it really, it really ministered to me and and touched me. So I know what you're talking about when you insert that personal piece for someone. It's it's powerful. <laughs> well, I'm humbled. I'm blessed beyond measure. That always brings tears to my eyes because the most important thing is that people encounter his presence. This whole topic we're talking about is nothing if it's not about his presence. That's where we encounter all these amazing, wonderful, beyond what we can understand, higher ways, thoughts, things. It's his presence. Yeah. So I'm blessed and thankful because that's the whole point, the whole point. And so the other scripture is Jeremiah 33, 3. These all impact us spiritually, physically, and emotionally. And um, 333 is called to me and I will answer you and I will tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. We at this juncture need that Mm -hmm. to be a now word every day to navigate the best and the worst of times that we were talking about. There's, it's a profound time to call on him to come up higher, like he speaks about in Revelation 4. And this one speaks to me intimately because he gave me a very loud prophetic picture of this scripture, both of these scriptures at 3.33 in the morning when we had one of my son's living, my son's friends living with us for a year. And they got locked out of the house at 3.33 in the morning. And I get this phone call at 3.33, Caleb calling. (laughs) You you can't mistake that because I knew I was researching the seven mountains things during that season. And you can't, absolutely can't deny he was speaking to me about Joshua 14, 12 through 15, and Esther 4.14, which is another profound life verse for me, but give me my mountain. <laughs> wow. Wow. And we're talking about one of the mountains he's given me and is putting me on. If you don't know much about the seven mountain thing, I think that's strategic with Bill Bright and YWAM and Campus Crusade and Lauren, Cunning- Lauren Cunningham and Lance Wilnow and... Um, Oh, gosh, uh, Johnny Enlow, those are just some of the voices in that right now. But another strategic piece, I've talked about this before, is uh, the Harrises, the Harris Smiths, uh, where they have gotten this amazing Holy Spirit download in this book called Make Your Splash. And it's unpacking those seven mountains to actually be 12 rivers and how profound that we would be a river and jump into a river with the rivers of living water flowing into us, knowing our very identity, our very purpose and jumping into the river to be who he has called us to be in these best and worst of times. So I highly encourage you to get this resource and unpack the 12 rivers because I believe it's an enlargement of the seven mountains. Wow. Wow. And a big piece in this that is not mentioned in the seven mountains is the medical piece and how that has come into play so significantly since 2020 and the whole, yes. whole journey we're on with all of what we're doing and speaking about. Mm-hmm. So any questions, comments, or do we go on to the next frequency? Well, considering we don't have a whole lot of time left today, I just thought I'd I'd just tell a little story. You know, Yah is so faithful. When I first, um, my early years of of salvation, one of the things I worked for, I was going to college trying to get my paralegal degree. And so I ended up working for a caterer. And one of the things that that she... uh, would have us do one of our clients was bill bright and so when all the the missionaries would come back and and talk about everything that they had experienced they would meet 
at the Bright's condo and and I would be behind the, the window washing dishes, listening to all the stories of all of their experiences and everything. So when it just brought that back to mind, when you were mentioning Bill Bright, you know, how faithful y'all can be. That was part of my early training was to get to be right there. You know, he had me in the position of serving. Well, he put steps and he doesn't make misses. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) <laughs> and again, it never looks like we thought it was going to look. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Are we stopping on frequencies for right now? Um, it, probably since we don't have, unless you would like to go ahead and get started on the on the next I'm, one. I'm fine. We don't have that many left. And I think we've unpacked a lot of things today. And we will see. I, I will have my quantum biology class today. So we'll see if there's anything that he wants to insert on the topic of light. Last yeah. time was on the topic of water and that was why I so wanted to bring in um, just a reminder of how we are mostly made up of water. And we went through that chart of how many, how, how much, what percentage of water each of our organs and body parts are. And water is such a powerful carrier of frequency. And so the, the importance of hydration and making sure in, you'll read on uh, Theon design site, how he talks about so much of the water that we're getting, you know, it's been impacted in the rivers and the, the, the oceans and whatnot is flowing to our processing plants. And then it goes through all the stuff. There's negative frequencies and all of that. So we have to be very intentional about staying hydrated, but staying hydrated with the right frequency Yes, frequencies and delving into all that. So it'll be interesting to see what he points out about the light as a reminder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And yeah, I, I really got um, kind of reminded of the importance of water and making sure it's structured, making sure it's, you know, at the right frequency before we're ingesting it. There's been lots of things coming up in my life and in my trip to Ohio and all that, that really put that back up on a top priority for me. Amen. Amen. I like this comment in the chat from Janet. I envision when the pure corporate worship and the restored frequencies of creation begin his glory coming upon us, like the scriptures say, his glory covering the earth as the waters cover the seas, where we can fear not and arise and shine because his glory has arisen upon us and the incense rising to his throne. I love that. I do too. (laughs) Yeah, thank you everybody who was with us here today. It's good to see you, uh, Bethany, again. And I know Bethany and Janet were in the chat and, and talking, and I'm so glad that they were they were both here with us Amen. and uh, and for everybody else who was watching today. It's, it was good to be back. It was good to be back. So good to see you again and uh, good to be a part of what Holy Spirit is highlighting in this now time. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that that kind of wraps us up for today. And uh, with that, we will say shalom. Shalom. Thank <laughs> you.